what's up you guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this makeup look it's pretty much just like a regular everyday natural makeup look with a little bit of glam so your everyday makeup look toned up a notch if you're interested in watching then of course just stay tuned so I just got out of the shower. Other than my lip balm, I don't have any makeup on. Regardless of whether your skin is oily or dry, you do wanna start with a primer. If your skin is oily like mine, then you do wanna use some kind of a primer that is going to mattify the skin. This is one that was relatively inexpensive. If I remember correctly, this was like less than $10 and it works pretty well. Next up, of course, is your foundation. I have been using the NARS foundation and I'm in the color Punjab, I think. For right now, it matches pretty well, but once my slight summer tan starts to fade, I do have a feeling that I'm gonna have to go a shade lighter, which is fine. In the past, I have used foundation brushes, but I've just found that they're a hassle to clean. I feel like if you use your fingers, it kind of works the product into the skin, whereas using a brush maybe just allows for the product to sit nicely on top of the skin. Not that that's a bad look, but usually when I wanna go for a more natural look, I just kind of really work the makeup into my skin with my fingers. And then afterwards you can just wash your hands. <laughs> using a foundation brush, I felt like it was just a lot of work having to constantly clean the brushes. And as far as my foundation goes, typically I use about a pump and a half. Rarely do I use two pumps of foundation, although I do sometimes. And then with the little bit of product that I have left, I pretty much just use it as a concealer and I just put it on spots where I would like a little more coverage. And then once I applied all of my foundation, I then take two fingers, maybe even three, and I really just kind of drag the makeup, go in circular motions, make sure that it's worked into my jawline, pretty much just going over my face to make sure that everything is worked into the skin and that there's no spots left that need to be blended. For today, I'm going to be using my Sephora Make No Mistake High Coverage Concealer. By the way, this is in the color Almond. It's just slightly lighter than my foundation, so it is going to brighten up the eye area a little bit. However, it's not super bright, so it's not gonna look funny. So that's another trick when you are applying your under eye concealer. Just try to go with the concealer. Maybe that's a shade lighter than your foundation. I wouldn't go any lighter than a shade, two shades tops just because otherwise it can look a little funny. First you wanna brighten the under eye area, but you don't wanna make it look like you literally have different colors of makeup on your face. I think that's going to do the opposite of what the goal is, which is to look natural and to look cute. Looking like you've got different spots of different colors of makeup all over your face, not so cute. When it comes to that under eye concealer, I pretty much just lightly and quickly pat and there might be some slight dragging involved, but for the most part, just lightly and quickly tapping in the area that you wanna blend that concealer in. And when you find that there's nothing left for you to blend out, well then you're done. And the next step is for you to set that concealer with your powder. You can go in with your powder. I just use a regular loose translucent. Typically I use the Laura Mercier. A little bit of the powder on the brush, give it a quick tap and just kind of dust that product. First, over the areas that you apply the concealer in, and then I kind of just do like a light layer of powder over my whole face after I've dealt with the concealer. But remember to try to keep everything light. I mean, real life and Instagram, believe it or not, are not the same thing. So while wearing a lot of makeup might look cute for Instagram pictures and might look good on Instagram models, in real life, you probably don't wanna go so heavy or so extreme all of the time. Don't put so much makeup on that it looks like the makeup is wearing you. I'm just gonna take a clear glitter lip gloss that I have. This is actually a Sephora plumping lip gloss, which I really like because the plumping lip glosses do bring blood flow to the lip. That's actually what plumps your lip. I feel like it just gives you a nice flush of color and it's your own natural pigment. So it literally just looks like you have nice naturally pink lips. Clear, glittery, kind of pinky Sephora lip plumping gloss. The next thing that I want to probably get started with are my eyes. A bronzy, metallic-y kind of eyeliner, liquid eyeliner, and lining my under eyes with it. I feel like it really just gives the eyes a nice pop 
and it's not too overdone it still looks pretty natural i don't use a super heavy line but i feel like it's enough to kind of catch someone's attention or get them maybe to notice your eyes a little bit more i am planning on doing that today but before i do i am going to be putting some eyeshadow on my lower lash line so i want to make sure that i do that before i put my eyeliner on otherwise it wouldn't make sense for me to line my under eye and then just pretty much blend it all out that's not what we want to do we want to do our eyeshadow first and then eyeliner comes second i'm going to be doing just a regular brown kind of nude natural palette on the eye so i'm going to be using my kylie palette these are the colors that are in it so again just neutral kinds of colors this one this one here possibly this one and these three colors i think again the more neutral brownie ones are going to be the main colors that i use for my under eye and for your under eye you want to make sure that you're using a very small and dense brush and so that it can stay in a pretty specific small area and again you know you can use as much or as little product as you want it's really up to you but i'm not going to go any heavier than this so the next thing that i want to do is the upper lid so for that you can use a more fluffy brush and a larger brush because this is going to go in your whole crease it's not such a specific small area also we don't want the color to be super dense or super intense in one spot we want to be able to blend this out so that it looks like a natural shadow literally just kind of enhancing your natural shape your natural crease and i'm also going to bring that fluffy brush down to my lower lash line and just kind of pull that eyeshadow down a little lower so that it looks a little more smoky and less drawn on and i literally don't have any product on this brush right now at all actually occasionally i take my brush and i just kind of clean it against the napkin to ensure that i don't have any product on it because at this point i'm literally just blending and feathering out so no product, just blending and feathering out. I'm using my Farsali. This is that Jelly Beam highlighter. I do like to use it for my eyes. So I'm just getting some on my ring finger and you guys can see how pretty that is. It's like a true gold. It's almost like a gold foil. It really reflects light nicely. Popping that in the inner corner and then kind of blending onto the lid. So the lighter shade for obvious reasons should go on after your darker shade or after your crease color. The next thing that I'm going to do is take a gold colored eyeliner. If you have a gold colored eyeliner, actually this is more of like a champagne or a sand. I just take that and actually line the inner corner of my eyes with it. Like I was saying earlier, I'm going to be using this copper kind of metallic eyeliner. So I just kind of cleaned the brush up a little bit in the actual container just to ensure that I don't have too much product on here and really making sure that the tip is pretty fine and that I have kind of condensed all of the hairs so that way I don't draw too thick or too heavy of a line. Then you can go ahead and draw on that line. You might not be able to even notice it much on camera because it is a very subtle and very light line. But kind of like what I was saying before, it's enough of a metallic to catch someone's eye a little bit or get people to look at your eyes a little bit more, a little bit longer. So I think it just does a, a good job at kind of accentuating the eye a little bit without having to overdo it too much or having to go on with a whole bunch of glitter and this and that and the third. Like I said, we want to keep it light and we want to keep it cute, but a little bit of glam can kind of spice things up and turn things up maybe one notch. I do want to do a little bit of an eyeliner on my upper lash line. I'm not going to be using an actual eyeliner. I'm just going to be taking an angled brush and just using the black eyeshadow to make kind of like a soft eyeline um, or to make kind of like a soft eye wing but again just kind of using your brush to keep things a little more light as opposed to using a heavy liquid eyeliner which is going to be much more intense and much more sharp to keep it cute you want to keep it clean you want to keep it put together but you don't want to overdo it you don't want to make it look like the makeup is wearing you or like people can't see past the makeup secret express control if you have not heard of this please look it up the way the mascara works how well the mascara does its job is important however what's equally important to me at least is how the mascara comes off I mean, I don't have to sit here and explain this to you. You ladies know. It is so hard to remove mascara sometimes. Sometimes it's just hard to get off of the lash. 
Sometimes it burns your eyes. Sometimes it gets all over your face and leaves a residue that's impossible to remove. So I really, really like this particular mascara because not only does it make your eyelashes super long, but also it removes super easily. It like clumps up as you remove it and it doesn't spread. It's not like an ink. It pretty much just like clumps up and sticks to itself. And it's really easy for you to just use your finger to pull it off of your eyelashes. I don't know. Hair is not dry, but makeup is done. So yeah. So this is pretty much the final result. Like I said at the beginning, just your everyday makeup look kind of tuned up a little bit, a little bit of extra glam here and there. The main thing to keep in mind when it comes to makeup, unless of course you're going for a more heavy look, but that's a different story. In general, you really wanna make sure that you are wearing the makeup and that the makeup is not wearing you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe and of course, turn your post notifications on so that you will be notified next time I post. Bye.